Okay. Okay, I'm Linda Deer, and this is Ray Holly, the man behind the curtain. Okay. He does a great job job behind that curtain, but you're gonna see Ray in action, so do not underestimate the power of Ray. Each week in Linda's weekly guided insights, I ask my guides, what's the most important thing for you to know right now? We channel these insights using Ask the Universal Channel, the same way your spirit guides and angels interact with you in a, pers in a personal coaching session with me. To receive Linda's weekly guided insights, go to lindadeer.com and sign up. Tonight, the guides will be talking about pretending your life away. This was published today in Linda's Weekly Guided Insights. And like always, Ray will be monitoring the feed for your questions and comments. So feel free to speak up and let me know what's on your mind regarding tonight's insight. Okay. Pretending your life away. What does it mean to pretend your life away? People take this mentality of pretending and exaggerating with them into their careers. People who exaggerate use these techniques to get into some of the most prestigious universities in the country. And we've all seen that lately in the news. People are unconsciously pretending their lives away on a daily basis in their relationships, their job, and with their friends and family. The amount of stress it took to keep the charade going eventually fell in on the person and their lives came tumbling down. We are living in times of disclosure. Things are not getting worse. They are finally coming to light. For those who are conscious, pretending, lying, or exaggerating is not something anyone could pull over on you or that you could do to yourself because you have a connection to your spirit guides and angels. They see right through the pretending, exaggerations, and lies. When you have a connection to them, you see what they see, the truth. All right, Ray. So what do we have, Ray? Who's who's with us? Oh, Veronica and Rebecca are here so far. No All right. questions or comments. But okay. Veronica did have a good comment. Veronica this morning. did, yeah. And we're gonna from the from the blog post for this on uh, the lindadeer.com website, Ray's gonna read uh, Veronica's comment about this. And I really like this comment she left because Veronica's aware of the fact that she does this, all right? And when you can take responsibility for your part in it where you do that, and you guys, you do it most of the time just to get along, just to fend off a problem or an argument with somebody, just to fit into the status quo because it's already tough enough, you know, in this life. We don't need any more, you know, exaggerations, lies, and all this stuff that we do to make it harder than it needs to be. And we do it because it's the common denominator. It's the status quo. And it's just easier to do that and just get, brush them off or you know, get rid of the situation. And you're missing it when you do that. You're cheating yourself and selling out when you do that. Uh, it's not worth it. It's not worth delving into that or just blowing it off. And while your kids watch you, you know, by example, learn from you. And they go, oh, yeah, my mom and dad, they sell, they sold out. And I see what I could do to, to, you know, to get through this life and kind of fly under the radar and kind of avoid all this kind of stuff, just like, just by going along with it, you know. But when you do that, you've sold out and you, you, you miss yourself. You miss your truth. You miss your, the reason you're here. You, you miss being, um, being, uh, true to yourself and if you're not that you won't have a connection to your guides you just won't you're not lining up with it you're missing it instead of lining up with it Ray go ahead okay Veronica said regarding pretending your life away uh, so I didn't start pretending and making stuff up 
until after I adopted fear as an almost constant presence. Right, and that's what the people in this world, the pressure that they put on you, all right? So Veronica brings up a great point. She sees where it started. Go ahead, Ray. But once I started pretending, I really worked with it and even believed my own lies. Veronica's very talented. We all are. That created a mess of confusion. Right. I intend now to be completely done with that as I appreciate reality as much as I can comprehend it and the truth as much as I can see it. That's so interesting. Great comment, Veronica. And what did I say, Ray? Linda Deer had a great comment response here. <laughs> Once you can accept reality, you will see the truth. You will see everything for what it is. And that's when your connection to your spirit guides and angels becomes effortless because you see what they see. You're, you're connected. Only then can you be who you are and equipped to make a difference in this world. To move into this in a solid way, write it all down in your daily journal writing. Reality is not always pleasant. So this practice will prevent you from regressing back into twisting it into something that you would like it to be. Which is how we all got to that point. We didn't like what we were seeing. We wanted it to be different than that. So we made it up. All right. It's like, I can't take it anymore. I don't want to be sober in this world. I don't want to see it for what it is. I don't want to deal with that. But you know what, you guys, you came here in, in this lifetime to be present. You hear that all the time, to be living in the now, to be present. That's where your spirit guides reside. That's the only way you'll connect with them. And to be present, you've got to look this in the eye. You've got to see it for what it is. And you will break the habit of just wanting to paint it into something that you want because you don't want to deal with it by using the journal. This is the companion journal to guide it. All right, and using part two, taking the journey, chapter one through 18, like Veronica's doing, and get in there and dig in there and find out where that verse started. Because if you don't, and then you don't continue to, if, if you do not continue to track your progress, I don't mean that progress is always, uh, that will always feel like progress. You'll see where you slip and you fall back into that pattern because you've done it for so long you got to write it into part three that part so you track your daily progress because you will slip up you'll fall right back into the old pattern without even realizing you did it you didn't want to do it you want it you want to be present in this world so you can do what you came here to do live the life you intended and and most of all have do it by having a connection to your spirit guides and angels otherwise it's a struggle and it's not supposed to be a struggle so that's how it's done. All right, Ray. Okay. So, so who else do we have there? Well, let's see, Kathy joined us and Melanie. Do we have any questions? Not, not yet. You guys bring on those questions, okay? So I, uh, you know, we're this pretending in your life. By the time you're growing up, you're through school, you know, you're in college, or you start dating. There's where it starts, really, big time. Yeah. When you go out on your first dates with somebody. They talked about that in this session. Right. I mean, you want to put your, you do want to put your best foot forward, and the way you do that is you just make stuff up a lot of times. And you know, it'd be interesting. I, you guys, I want you to try something. I want you to take a walk on the wild side. All right. And what I want you to do is I want you to take and write in your journal, your notebook, whatever you have, write down the way you want to behave, the way you want to respond, the way you want to act, okay? Write it down. And then when you write it down and you see it there, take yourself out to be around people. And and because you wrote it down, you, you, you wrote down the way that you know that you need to be, you need to you need to conduct yourself so you can stay connected, not get disconnected, okay, but stay connected and do everything that you can that you even sit back and just go pause, I'm going to pause. 
I'm not going to interact with these people. I'm going to listen. I'm going to observe. And I'm going to breathe. Okay. And then when I respond, I'm going to respond with my, with my complete and total truth. I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they say about me. I don't care what they do. I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to be who I am. And start there, start there. And then write that down. When you get home, write that down as far as the action you took to what you wrote in part three about what you want, about how you want yourself to be able to come out and be yourself, all right? And I'm telling you, if you just take that pause and just let yourself gather yourself in the in the scope of all those people and all the commotion and everything that's going on and you might even want to impress somebody just take it easy just don't set yourself up for a fall and conduct yourself from your real self maybe for the first time ever then you don't have to real remember what you told them you, yeah you don't have to pretend because when you pretend you're not good enough, you, inside you're telling yourself that you're not good enough. You can't be accepted for who you are. You're not okay. And that is totally not true. And you, you need to test it. You need to take a risk. You need to try it, okay? And go out there and be who you are. But reinforce it before you go out by writing down what that is. Being the tr most honest you you could possibly be. And start living from that. Go ahead, All right, we got some comments. Kathy, Kathy Cartagena, thank you. Hi, Kathy. I think I started pretending when I married my second husband. I listened to all the music he liked. I went to the events he liked. I watched the TV shows he liked. I think I was afraid I would not be accepted if I was the real me. It was not until I began my spiritual journey three years ago that my true self resurfaced <laughs> I mean you guys when this comes out when you first let this breathe into this world okay it's powerful it's like something you can't believe you let yourself have and it's addictive once you let yourself have it what you know they say once you know something you can never go back that's what this is like. Kathy started this three years ago, and she's stronger than ever. It's not something you can pretend never happened. That's not something you can keep putting off like you're not okay, at, or you you don't need that. Okay, You don't need that. That's you. you. Of course you need that. You should have never let it go, right? It's just time to bring it back and be an example for the grandkids. Be an example for your friends and family. They will not all like it. They won't like it. They want you to be who you used to be, the one they could control, the one, you know, none of that. It's a miss. It's a miss. And you were disconnected. And the more disconnected you were, the more you let it happen because you felt felt um, weak. Yeah. When, you, when you're not coming from who you are, you are weak. You're panting to keep up. Everything's a struggle, and it's not supposed to be like that so quit pretending your life away pretending your life away means you live your whole life and you miss it you didn't come here to miss it so cat so let's let kathy's uh guides her spirit guides and angels talk to her about what she said great comment and here they go kathy kathy when you are pretending there is a level of uncertainty that needs to be overcome as well as maintained. You see, the more you are pretending, the more you make stuff up and pretend more right right kathy stopped doing that kathy i can't say that we stop it totally for you know we grow into it we we it's a process 
where we let ourselves have ourselves. We see the reward, the payoff. We see how we feel, and it's amazing. That's how you're going to know that this is the right thing for you to do. You are going to feel yourself back, maybe for the first time in 50 years, maybe for the first time ever. Because it's, it can be very hard to be yourself in this world with all the things that come at you and test you and bullies. And, you know, it's just filled with traps, you guys. And that's why, I don't know, it, it takes t some time alone, some, some quiet time, some personal writing that you do with yourself to nurture yourself, your true self back into existence. That's what you do when you do this writing, all right? All right. Joy. Joy says, I have been pretending my whole life until I turned about 50. Having people like me was the most important thing to me. Right. right. And that's what kept her pretending. Come over here, Ray, and let's bring her spirit guides and angels in and let them You've been so honest about that too, Joy. That's the first step into solving this. I can, here's your guides and here they go. You may find that it takes a while to unravel all the pretending. If you have been pretending for a long time for for years or all your life, there is a lot to review and go back over to see if it was something you made up or was it one of your true qualities you just embellished on right right so what they're saying there uh one of your true qualities that you embellished on you still took what was true and blew it out of proportion because you're used to doing that with everything you get your hands on everything you can imagine because that's what caused all this to become so real and alive as much as it is not true okay it's a knee-jerk response it's that's why got to write this stuff down. You will break the patterns because when you write it in, this is the part where you write it into part three and you keep track of yourself as you're moving through it. And this is your project. Nobody knows what you're doing. Nobody needs to know or is supposed to know. All right. This is you working on you. And you work through this and you review and you go back and, and you write more and you write more and you write more and more and more. Then you go back and review what you wrote. You go, okay. I am so getting this. I am so ready to do this. You will heal that. If you do this, like I'm asking you to do, catch yourself every time you write it in here, in chronological order, you will have a grip on this within one month. That's how fast this works. Because I want you to know that when you sit here and you pour out your, your honesty, your transparent 100 percent when you talk in here your guides are with you and they're watching what you're writing they're feeling it and the connection is being made when you that's discarding this pretending you're done pretending now you're getting you're in a hardcore process of cleaning that up and when you do that your guides are with you you they're with you even if you don't want them to be with you it, it's a byproduct of you being you, okay? What else do we have, Ray? I had a lifetime of examples of people making stuff up. You, what did you have? Well, I was, in the, I was in, uh, in the recruiting business, in the executive search business for over 20 years. And somewhere along the line there, the personnel department who would tell you anything you ever wanted to know about an employee or former employee, became the human resources department and everything got touchy-feely and they were afraid they were going to get sued and they would tell you nothing okay. except yes that person worked there and they would tell you maybe 
their title. But they wouldn't tell you anything else about education or how much they were making or what kind of responsibilities they had or so everybody had like free reign to exaggerate all that stuff. Is it just make it up? Okay. So they so that's how this got so out of control, you know, you guys? This pretending, it became a, a matter of survival. That's what Ray's talking about. Because it about. was it was a comp competition driven environment. So with, with that was litigious. Right, it was. So I mean, just like we saw recently, they lied about their schooling. They'd say they went to that college, but they didn't have a degree. For right. What they studied, or right. they didn't go there for as long as they said. They'd lie about their responsibilities. They'd lie about the times they were in a certain position. More exaggerated. Their titles. You know, they weren't. They weren't a vice president. They were. A director or a manager uh, and everybody lied about their compensation they would tell you what they wanted to make in their next job not what they were making in their last job so in your profession where you were a skilled professional in placing these um, people in positions mm -hmm. you got so you didn't trust what anyone said because it was so common right it was so common and even though say the human resources department wouldn't tell me, so I would call many times. I would call the college and find out that you never went there. So Ray had to go around the guard at the gate to get to the truth. Right. Okay, that's what he had to do. And it's they couldn't even do it. They had their hands tied behind their backs because of their of of the laws that governed them that didn't allow them to go there. You know, because it would cause all these problems and bring lawsuits to them and stuff like that. That's been a big one, is the threat of being sued. Right. That's a huge one. They, they push you in a corner, you know? So what happens if you find yourself in a spot like that, right? As a recruiter or yeah. as a person? Oh, I, I would call the college. I would call other people who I knew from that same company to tell me in that same department, tell me all about that person. Okay, right, right. So Ray did his, he did due diligence that went beyond, above and beyond the call of duty. Anybody else in his situation would have been, well, you know, HR said this and, you know, that's what all I could find out and I can't find out anymore. But you didn't do that. No, I was stealth. Why didn't you do that, Ray? Well, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to present the real person to my client. That's called integrity. Right. Okay. So even when you're up against the wall, you have to grab for your integrity because if you let that go, that's a serious sellout. Don't, that's like giving it up your soul. You know, you just can't do that, you know, and sleep at night and feel good about what you're doing and come to work the next day and go, I love my job. I love what I'm doing. I believe in what I'm doing because I'm able to do it. All right. You got it. Whatever it takes in your life, you guys, if you don't, if they can't let you have your integrity, then it's going to cost you more than it's worth. You will wind up pretending your life away. Yeah. And the other thing was I didn't want my client because I worked for my client. That's who paid me. I didn't want my client to find out down the road you know, whether it's a few months or a few years that, hey, that guy really doesn't have a, a PhD in and they, they, nuclear physics. And, and his pay scale or was her based pay on that. was based on that, quali that, that credential. Right. And that's the other thing. Everybody lied about their, how much they were making, especially sales and marketing people. And they all lied by the same amount, 10%. So if they told me they made a hundred thousand dollars, I knew they were lying that they were only making Ray, Ray used to 90. say, Ray used to say, I watched him do his work in our, the early part of our marriage, Ray would say, I can smell him lying, Linda. <laughs> Literally over the phone, I can smell him lying. You know, it's, it's, it's a skill you acquire after you've interviewed uh, a little over 50,000 people in your lifetime on the telephone. <laughs> it's crazy. So wh what other questions do we have there? Well, let's see. <laughs> Uh, Rebecca says, um, I put myself on the back burner for years. I'm still pretending so we can have a life. 
well, I'm stuck and I'm feeling like it's my fault because of the person I put myself into. Okay, so she's pretending, right. she right. pretended herself into somebody she doesn't like. And for and, the, okay, go ahead, Frank. Uh, but I'm starting to realize it's time for a big change and I'm looking for guidance to change it now. And that's what you're going to get, Rebecca, right now when you show up on Tuesdays and you have these questions that relate to the, to the subject matter for the night. And they're well thought out. And they're well thought out. Great job on that question. You've gotten better at those questions, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Your spirit guides and angels are going to answer you, and here they go. Rebecca, you feel uncomfortable because you didn't like the person you had to pretend to be for others. The fear was that others would judge you the way you really are. So you made it up or put icing on the cake. Now, after you have pretended for so long, it becomes a chore to continue to carry around all the lies, the exaggerations, the that's how I want to be instead of that's how I really am. So you are now finding relief in the ability to not worry about what others will say and what they will force you to do. Yeah. Once you finally connect with this, uh, Rebecca, and you write it down, you got to write these things down. This is your private place. This is where when you write these things down, Rebecca. This is yours. Nobody gets to see this, okay? This is between you and your spirit guides, angels, and us. <laughs> because this is how you're going to flush it out. Once you get that in there, once you write that down, what that is, who that is, all right? In the beginning, here's what I'm getting with you, Rebecca. What you're going to do in the beginning is you're going to write down who it is you want to be, who it is you'd like to be, who it is you think you are before you get to who it is you are. Because you keep thinking that you need, if you're not going to go on pretending that you're somebody else, that then, then you want that somebody else to be somebody really great. Somebody they'll, they'll be so impressed with, everyone will like so much. You're going to exaggerate that. So you're going to do some of that in the beginning until you start getting down to who you are, who you are, okay? That's who you are looking for here, all right? Not for somebody you idolize, somebody you'd like to be like, somebody that everyone will love and approve of. They may not all love and approve of you. They don't all love and approve of me, okay? And still, I am who I am. I got to be who I am. I got to be me. And you, and that's what this comes down to. So you're going to go through some things that make you feel a little bit like this as you move through it, and you're going to do it. I can feel it with you. So go ahead and pretend your way into it. You're going to still do some pretending, uh, and you're going to do that for yourself because you've neglected yourself from yourself for so long in such a deep way that you're going to do a little make-believe in the beginning, all right? And that's okay. Just write it all down and continue to write because you will come to the surface. You will be the one that rises up. Yeah, when, when you start backpedaling like that, you yeah. even might have to start pretending that you don't care about what other people say about you anymore or what they think or what they're going to judge you about. And then eventually you'll convince yourself of that. But you back away from it, little by little. You kids can't back away from it altogether. It doesn't happen overnight. Especially if you've been doing it for years. 
but when you write it down and you keep track of what you're doing and going through the process, right. you're going to get there faster than any other way, than any other way. You've got to write it down. You've got to track your progress and you and where you slip back and where you catch yourself. You won't know you slipped back. You will not know how to really look at it until you refer back to it. You review it in a month from now. You look back at your journal and you flip back to those early pages and go, wow, I see what I was doing. That's good. Yeah, you're right, it's a process. It is. It's not a magic pill. One day you just don't wake up and, and tell yourself, well, I don't care what people think about me anymore. Right, you, you know it, you're aware of it now, and now you've got to go through the process of taking off the layers, the years of doing it. And by the way, the people who like you the way you are, or don't like you the way you are, but don't want you to change that, they will have some upgrading to do as a result of this. So you, you got to be, once you connect, though, with that real you, and you make that connection with your guides, which is a, pri, a, a byproduct of that. It's not something you go chasing. It just happens. When you're real with yourself and you're present, the connection is there, okay? And when they start to, you know, to throw darts at you or laugh at you or insult you or have a problem with you becoming you, you will be strong. You will... You will, again, go back to your journal, your friend here, your best friend, and write in there what's going on, what happened, and how you responded. What happened, and how you want, want to respond in a way that's more uh, true to yourself as you move through it. Because the first time, you may not respond well to that. But it's about learning how to manage this so you can have yourself back. And nobody ever can make you retreat back into your shell or become something for their benefit, okay? Something that suits them. That's not okay, Rebecca, or any of you, all right? That's how you got lost in the first place. But once you have this back, it's not defiant, it's not angry, it's not, it's healed, okay? And it's you. Now you can take that and move through this life with that and being connected with your guides, you cannot miss. This life no lo is no longer a struggle. Right. So, Ray, do we have any more questions there? Uh, no more questions, but Anna May, join us. Hi, Anna May. Hi, Anna May. And we look forward to having you into the group. Right. Anna May is the newest owner of a Ask the Universal, Universal Channel, Channel talking board. She's got the online version. And try to join us on Thursday, Anna May, because it's going to be it's going to be free channeled readings on. Ask the Universal Channel Facebook uh, exclusive group page that we have. See how it works. To, to experience these, uh, the, the students of Ask the Universal Channel and how well they're doing, they're awesome, right? So I'm going to talk about next week, and we're going to do the closing message from the guides on this topic about pretending your life away. But before I do that, I'm going to announce a few things. Tomorrow, Wednesday, April the 10th, at 6 p.m. Pacific time, I will be performing a live coaching session right here on my Facebook page at Linda Dear Author, using my latest book, My Guided Journey, Companion Journal to Guide It. So you can experience a one-on-one -on -one personal coaching session with me. And then... The next day, on Thursday, what we were just talking to Anna May about, April the 11th at 6 p.m. Pacific, learn how to channel your own spirit guides, just like we do. Join our exclusive Facebook group, Ask the Universal Channel. In this group, members receive free lessons and free channeled readings. That's going to be this Thursday. So if you're, if you're already in the group, Get in there and, and reserve your spot. There's only four spots available for Friday, I mean for Thursday. And we've got somebody already booked for, for the 6 o'clock uh, spot. And th these channel free channel readings will be uh, done from the students of Ask the Universal Channel. So ask to join 
by going to the link in the description above this video. All right? And we'll be there to moderate. Yeah, Ray and I are there uh, to moderate the group. So it goes real quick, smoothly. You're going to love it. You're going to come out with some information that is really powerful and valuable. Before the spirit guides bring through their closing message for today's insight, we want to let you know about next Tuesday, every Tuesday we're here live too. April 16th, join Linda Live right here on Facebook. This will be a Q&A and commentary with Linda and her spirit guides at 6 p.m. Pacific time, so don't miss it. In Linda's weekly guided insights, my spirit guides will be talking about you came here to make a difference. People ask themselves, why am I here? And what am I supposed to be doing? What is my purpose? We can tell you that it's an easy answer. You came here to make a difference. You came here to make the world a better place with our help. That would be your spirit guides and angels. It's a challenge for you to become more than you could have been had you never tried. That's because it requires that you trust what you know, even if you can't explain it to the others who have forgotten. In doing what you came here to do to make a difference, everything you do, and I mean everything you do in your life, is a part of a larger plan. That's why I ask you guys to start tracking your progress, logging what's going on with you on a day-to-day -day basis in part three of My Guided Journey. It asks you a series of questions and it takes you through a process that I work you through on Wednesday nights here on Facebook at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. So be sure to show up for that because that's how you're going to get to know what that difference is that you're going to know what that difference is that you make when you get back to yourself when you get back to who it is that you are okay you can't do it if you're not present you can't do it if you're pretending to be someone else right you can't you're not there you're not connected your brilliance is missing your shine isn't there okay so this is about how do you make a difference you make a difference when you start becoming who you are. You, and when you do that, the byproduct of that, like we talked about tonight, is making that connection to your spirit guides and angels without any effort at all. All right? So the, the spirit guides and angels are going to close this session on tonight's theme, pretending your life away. And here they go. Pretending lying, exaggerating, and making stuff up is not something we would ever encourage you to do. We don't have certain expectations for you. You have free will. But since we never pretend or exaggerate with you, you don't have to do it with us. You only feel compelled to do this from outside pressure and fear of being judged. When it comes to judgment, the only person you need to worry about is the person in the mirror. And remember, when we judge, judge someone else, we point one finger out, see this, see this, one out and three back. <laughs> the universe works in amazing ways. It's, it's really designed to get our attention, to get us to halt and examine what we're doing. You're going to have to do that, you guys. You're going to have to sit back 
and pause so this real self of you, the true self of you, can emerge. You've got to stop jumping in front of it and having the answers and, and, and trying to be funny and try, trying, to, trying to, you know, do something that's going to get you a raise or whatever. You, you have to be the one that quits doing that so you can really, really let this self of you, this true self, begin to come out. It's gentle. It's going to come out and it, it's going to, it's not going to be an expert in this life because you push it away. You've been pretending it away for a long time. So in the beginning, it's going to be maybe quiet or maybe flamboyant. <laughs> Who's in there? I don't know. But whoever it is, and it's the real you, you let that person out of there. You let them out of that cage. All right. It's the person you brought with you. It's who you are. No one had the right to ever squelch that. All right. All right. Yeah. We love you guys. We'll we do. See, we'll see you tomorrow, baby, right here on Facebook Live. Um, with a, to watch you do to, a to coaching watch, session. To watch me do a, a angel coaching coaching session with my client live. All right, don't miss it. See you then. Okay. Good, Good night. night, everybody.